Hello, welcome back to my haunted library, it's Regina. So on my channel, I d discuss mostly fiction, sometimes films, TV, some nonfiction work. And I also really enjoy true crime, which I haven't talked too much about on this channel. So today I'm gonna to share with you one of my favorite true crime books, and that's called Echoes in the Darkness by Joseph Wamba. I think is how you pronounce it. So this story takes place, this true crime story, takes place close to where I live and where I grew up. Uh, this is the, I live like in the northern section of f the Philadelphia suburbs. This would be in the uh, west section of the Philadelphia, Philadelphia suburbs known as the Main Line. The Main Line, west of Philadelphia, is studded with estates and mansions along with prep schools, academies, and famous universities. It is also steeped in colonial history with a strong flavor of the Gothic. And nothing could be more Gothic than the main line murder case. At the core of this case are bright academics and upright citizens. Bill Bradfield is considered an outstanding teacher, a self-styled expert in Greek and in the poetry and life of his special hero, Ezra Pound. But along with his penchant for poetry, is his bent for collecting women. Dr. J. Smith, the principal of Bradfield School, has such strange nocturnal habits and sinister ways that colleagues have dubbed him the Prince of Darkness. What brings both men to public attention is the baffling murder in 1979, so this is when I was in high school, of a teaching colleague whose nude body is found in her car. Her two young children have vanished. And then it kind of goes on. I just don't want to read the uh, flap here, but I liked how they talk about the Gothic qualities. Uh, okay, so, so this case <laughs> like came out when I was in high school and I remember following it in the uh, newspaper and it was the talk of the town, really. It's a fascinating case and it's a fascinating read. So this murder took place in a high school among English teachers and I find that extremely fascinating. Uh, for, for a lot of reasons, but William Bradfield was the, that charismatic teacher, the kind of teacher who's teaching all the AP courses, who has this uh, you know, group of admiring students. And he, he really pretty much was like a bullshit artist, but he fooled a lot of people. And he had uh, two women who were also in the same department, both named Sue, in love with him. One woman was his like long suffering girlfriend and she, that he lived with for a long time. And the other was a woman named Susan Reinert, who was a recently divorced woman. She had two kids, two younger kids, and they start having an affair. He also has other members of the, of the department, a young man who he uh, befriends, who's kind of like a, a bit of a, he, he's a horror geek, which makes it a very interesting character. And he really looks up to Bill and Bill and the other Sue that he lives with are kind of like foster parents to him. So really a key member of this whole group is a man named Jay Smith, who was the principal of the school. And this guy is a total sociopath, um, crazy individual who was arrested for, originally arrested for posing as a Brinks car uh, guard and robbing a, I think it was a Sears store dressed as a guard uh, in, in the local mall. This is a mall that I've, you know, gone to a million times. So what happens in the story? I don't want to give all of it away because it's such a great story and such a great read, but it wouldn't be given too much away to tell you that one of the Sues gets murdered along with, um, uh, her two children who are missing. And these teachers are involved. That's, that's, I'm just gonna put it out there like that. And uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating story. It's, it's really horrible what happened to this woman. What is so fascinating about these characters in this story, and aside from the fact that it's all true, is that these are like English teachers. And the, the, the stuff that's going on in these relationships, the the, the drama and the intrigue is absolutely fascinating. There's a great TV uh, miniseries that 
it's it was on YouTube for a while when someone took it down. I'm going to try to include a couple clips here so you'll see uh, a little bit of it. It's so good. I have a VHS copy of it and I really wish they would re-release it because it's it's an amazing mini series. There were a lot of great mini series back in in this time based on books like this that you can't find anymore and I'm I'm wondering why they're not uh, I guess it's it's like an, a rights situation but I really wish they would release this one because it's so good. Peter Coyote plays William Bradfield and he's if you know him as an actor he's so good and he's so good in this role he's the way he delivers his lines and he's such a perfect bullshit artist you know he he has everyone fooled with his you know beard and his uh ancient mariner routine and he he's this kind of person who pontificates about you know James Joyce and uh you might know someone like this uh and and he has everyone fooled everyone fooled and he fools a lot of women he gets a lot of people to do his dirty work for him and uh very interesting character. Stockard Channing is also in this miniseries. She plays Susan Reinert, and she's great. She's a very mousy character. She's got like the big glasses, and uh, he would go after these really kind of mousy type of women and schmooze them, and and you know, give them a whole line of BS, and and they would fall in love with him, and. He's really just a completely evil character. I don't think that he ever, uh, you know, confessed to the crime, but he and Jay Smith make really interesting bedfellows of criminals. And Jay Smith was probably a serial killer because his daughter and her boyfriend disappeared. His wife had cancer, but God knows if he ended her life early. And then these, uh, these two kids, their bodies were never found. And we assume that they're dead too. So Jay Smith, interestingly enough, did get out of prison on a technicality. He got out. He was a very, very smart man and very, very dangerous. And the fact that he was working as a school principal is, re is really creepy. In fact, I worked at that uh, school. At, I, I directed a community theater play at that school about 20 years ago. And one of the actors who was in the play worked in the English department back in the day, he was retired, worked in the English department with those same teachers. And I did pick his brain a little bit, or I attempted to about, you know, what, what were they like? And he just didn't want to talk about it, which was a shame because, you know, I didn't want to push it, but I was dying to know his opinion, but maybe he was just tired of talking about it, which makes sense. So even though this book is a nonfiction account of the events of this, um, murder, well, triple murder, perhaps more. It reads like a novel. It's a really good book. It's a really fast read. I have uh, I was lucky to find this one at a thrift store in, in nice condition, but I've read this many times because I always go back to it because it's so good. And like I said, the mini series, if you can find it, is definitely worth watching. It's uh, highly entertaining. So let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite true crime books. I would love to hear your thoughts. So uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library, and I'll see you soon. Bye.